I just want to share a couple things that I think are important after you take a beard down from monster beard down to scruff beard or goatee. One of the first things that you're going to notice is that you have a smile. And it's really funny. I, I happen to be, as many of you know, I hear only in one ear, so I rely on reading lips as well as the little bit of hearing that I have. That's one of the reasons why I talk so loud is because I have to hear myself as well. What's interesting is when you have a big giant beard and a big giant mustache, you can't see people's smiles. And I've always said, I teach my acting students this, that your smile is the key that opens up doors to opportunity. And you know what? Your smile should be as bright as you can possibly get it. I know naturally some people have brighter smiles than others. A lot of it has to do with your personal habits. Now, I didn't see my smile. When I had the big beard, the only way you knew I was smiling is if I really, really trimmed the mustache or my eyes got all wrinkly and you could kind of see it. Some people happen to smile with their eyes. You ever hear that phrase, he smiles or she smiles with her eyes? That's what happens to me. Some people, you don't even know if they're happy or if they're smiling because their beards are so big and that's not a value judgment in any way. But one of the first things I noticed after having a beard for two years is I have a smile. Holy smokes. Now, and of course that smile has been opening doors for me for years, unlocking doors of opportunity. It's real important. You can get more done with a smile than you can with a frown or even a smirk. Remember, uh, I used to teach my students all the time at the acting studio, I would say a, a smirk is a smile without teeth. You want to show teeth. That's super, super important. And one of the things you're going to notice after having a big beard if you decide to go back is that your smile is not as bright as it once was because out of sight, out of mind, you're not taking care of it as much. And I'm not saying you're neglecting it. I know that when I took off the huge beard, for me, my smile was a little bit brassier. And I'm thinking, holy cow, because I wasn't whitening my teeth, I wasn't brushing my teeth as much. It was kind of a, a pain in the neck to get all foamy and stuff like that. So I was brushing and flossing in the shower twice a day and then rinsing my mouth out. Now I saw my smile and I'm like, gosh, I really do like my smile. But I want it to be as bright and white as possible. And one of the things that I want to encourage you to do is use a teeth whitening regimen. Now, am I selling anything? Of course, everything I do, there's links down below. I'm unapologetic about that. But for those who want to jump in the car and go somewhere and get something, that's fantastic too. One of the first things that I would do is I would get these dental trays. This is a top and bottom one, and this is made of wax. It came not molded to anything. It came so all you do is kind of squeeze, you know, you, you bite down on it and it forms to your teeth. So it's kind of like a, okay, okay. The other one is your typical uh, football sports uh, mouth guard. They usually come in red, black, clear, and cloudy. I like the cloudy only because I can see the gel in it. The clear ones, you can't really see the gel once you put it in. So I like, I like that contrast. That's all. And the red one and the, and the black one. And I'm talking these are really cheap. You can get them for under a few dollars. Super cheap. And you put them in boiling water, take it out with tongs, you put it in your mouth, and you mold it to your teeth, top and or bottom. Like that. See? So what I do is I just get like this five-minute whitening gel. This, I love this stuff. Believe me, this will last you a year if you use it the way that I'm telling you to. If you use it the way that they tell you to, you're going to buy it every month. So what I do is I literally, I don't fill up the trays. They say fill them up and then put the tray in your mouth. You don't have to do that. You really don't. I just put a few drops in my hand like that. And then I take a, a cotton swab, saturate it, and then I put it on my teeth like this, focusing on in between the teeth, okay? Now the gel is adhering to the teeth, okay? And then you put this in like that. It fits perfectly, so then 
what I do is I take 10 minutes, I set my little timer, this is my procrastination and, and the timer that I use to get things done. Uh, even though it's a five minute job, I always set it for 10 minutes and then I, I'm doing something. And usually I am whitening my teeth. I, I did this uh, a few times a week until I got my white teeth back after having the big beard. Now the teeth are white again and that's great. But I will put the trays in and whiten the teeth while I am lining up my beard at the sink. That's just kind of like what I do. So it's five to 10 minutes and then this goes off. Take the tray out, rinse it out. Don't rinse your mouth out because the this hydrogen peroxide gel will continue to whiten your teeth for up to 30 minutes after. Another solution is take a cotton swab. This is hydrogen peroxide. Saturate the Q-tip with it and rub your teeth with it and put the tray in and do the same thing for 5, 10, 15 minutes, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, don't do it indefinitely. Don't walk around half a day or a morning with the tray in your mouth. You don't want to harm yourself. There is a kind of like a rule, uh, what do they call it, like the law of diminishing returns. More is not always better. I think we have some solutions there because when you take the big beard down, you're going to notice you have a smile again. And that smile is valuable. It is the key that unlocks doors of opportunity for you that choose to go that route. I hope that helps. Thanks a lot.